Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Sheep Blowfly Update, Sterile Insect Technology. I'm Jody Rizé and I'm part of the Sheep Connect SA team. Today's um, webinar is presented by Peter Crisp. Peter is the Principal Ecologist with SARDI at South Australia's Way Institute and has 20 years experience in entomology and in the study of mites, working largely with pests that restrict market access or are of biosecurity concern. Peter has been involved in international programs developing the sterile insect technique and he'll talk about how this can be expanded to apply to sheep by fly. Thanks Peter. Uh, good evening and thanks to uh, thanks Ian, thanks Sheep Connect for the opportunity. Um, coming from somewhere slightly different, uh, looking at uh, sterile insect technique, uh, which is used for quite a few different species around the world. And we, we're working with, um, I've got Martin Van Helden at weight with me, um, Professor Phil Taylor from Macquarie, Nancy Cunningham who works with us, um, Sarah Wheeler from Uni of Adelaide. Um, so the pest, I'm quite sure you all know it, the copper green, uh, that's not necessarily a great diagnostic tool. Uh, the adults are about 10 mil long, the, the maggots are smooth and white. Uh, they're responsible for about 90% of fly strike, uh, not all of it. Breeds preferentially on sheep, it can breed in carrion, but it's really, really not very good at that and is outcompeted by a lot of these others that will also cause fly strike, but are happier in carrion and often the others are coming in second after the uh, lacilia. And, and I think you you know all that and what the, we're working on, what the total cost to industry is, but it's pretty frightening. Uh, so how does sterile insect work? We mass rear, um, that's a picture of the facility, new facility for fruit fly at Port Augusta. Uh, we then irradiate, currently we're using x-ray. Um, it's pretty efficient and gets rid of the risks of having cobalt lying around and that sort of thing. Uh, we release them in the field, trying to time them to match the early flights of uh, wildflies. Uh, then the males then mate with wild females and any eggs that they happen to lay don't hatch. Reduces fertility of the population and the target species. Uh, we can get localised uh, elimination and suppression and that's sort of the area we're playing in. This is probably the most ambitious, successful and, and amazing program uh, where screwworm fly, which as you can see looks a whole lot like um, sheep blowfly, has been released over a period from United States, Mexico and then down through Central America. It's it's quite a been been quite an impressive program. It has taken a while. Uh, and, and the program has got better and better as it's gone. They now really operate just as a, um, to, to catch the odd uh, incursion that still comes from uh, South America, but they're now looking at seeing if they can eradicate their false codling moth they used in uh, South Africa extremely successfully and reduce shipments, uh, reduce rejection of shipments. Uh, releasing a, a mere 40 million moths uh, each week, which works out a couple of thousand per hectare per week. With sheep blowfly, we have the advantage of we can go down to about 40 or 50 flies per hectare per week. It, it suits the very low density um, that we see out in the field. Other ones, uh, Tetsu fly was uh, is, is well controlled with SIT, but the first program on Tetsu fly, they, they set themselves three years, but had to give up after a year because they'd completely eradicated it from the area they were working in. Melon fly, Mexican fruit fly, Queensland fruit fly, we use that in Adelaide and in the Riverland and Mediterranean fruit fly in Adelaide. And it's also been used um, for Queensland fruit fly in the West pretty successfully. But does it work with Lucilia? Uh, there is a current program in Bangladesh where what we call sheep fruit fly, they a sheep blowfly rather. Um, they call it fish fly because it smashes their dried fish industry. And you can see that fish there with all the maggots eating away. And they've been experimenting with sterile releases since 2005 and they've streamlined the way they work and they're now building a new facility and it will be their main approach in their dried fish industry for control of uh, Lucilia. 
There are area wide programs uh, that can be used for exclusion. So you can use it in your area if you don't have it, you put a low number in to prevent uh, any establishment. Uh, that's usually done at pre threshold detections and then can be used if you get suppress again once you get past your thresholds that you set for yourself. Certainly for South Australia, if we detect uh, sterile flies, we don't restrict trade. Or if Victoria gets sterile flies, we don't um, restrict trade because they're not counted as being a fly, really. Uh, so the three main ways, uh, eradication, management and prevention. SIT works best when insect numbers are low. Uh, if you have really high numbers of insects, you, they will probably find each other. Uh, the wildflies will probably find each other at least at a low level. Sheep blowfly is an ideal candidate because generally um, low numbers in the field, uh, but also as they emerge, we can time so that we can do major releases uh, at that first emergence uh, and try and prevent it for the whole season or suppress it for the whole se whole year. Peter, we have a question. Um, do the female blowflies mate with more than one male? Uh, sheep blowfly normally don't. They, they tend to be quite chaste, <laughs> but also the way we go, we try and outnumber the wildflies. Um, so that even if they do choose to mate again, that it's still very high chance that they will mate with a sterile again. Uh, but usually they only mate once. They are seasonal. So with one of the things we have with um, Lucilia that we don't have with some other insects is we can store them. So we can actually produce them over winter and store them and then release a really large number in that first flight to just outnumber them quite substantially. Sheep blowfly or Lucilia tend to have low mobility on their own. Um, they do get help on the back of trucks and those sorts of things, um, but they're really not particularly mobile. And we have all the technology we need pretty much other than, you know, optimization of some things to, to produce them. Um, what's it cost? We're still working on that, uh, but we're estimating about $1,000 to produce a million flies but at a release, light, release rate of 40 flies per hectare, it's about 40 cents a hectare for release. Uh, for flies, on top of that, you're looking at a few cents per hectare um, running a plane, if you're releasing from a plane. So our current aim is to help with area-wide management. These programs tend to work better if you do area-wide, um, but, depending on the size of your property, we believe um, targeted release on your own property will assist. Um, we still want to try and um, understand them a little bit more, particularly on some of the pastoral lands. So what are we going to try and do? We are currently completing a feasibility and economic analysis study um, that we'll be submitting hopefully in May. Um, we're going to select isolated sites for eradication evaluation, uh, small scale, give us better understanding, really get our costs out right, uh, and improve our knowledge of, of the Lucilia ecology. We're going to look at you know, uh, how we would best establish rearing facilities. We can try and make them transportable if we can, so they'll be based on shipping containers so we can move them quite readily to where our problems are and as we eradicate from one area we can move them to other areas where they're important. And uh, part of this will be improving our rearing and storage techniques. Uh, well, this will also, which some of that work will include DPI New South Wales and uh, some areas of Melbourne Uni. Although we, we are, um, what I'm saying, we're looking at small scale, uh, we are investigating at the moment a total eradication from Kangaroo Island, which we think is probably about a four year project. We can start within 12 months. We, we have certainly got producer support from producers on the island and um, our minister is certainly looking at ways that um, this can be brought in. Tasmania is also highly uh, interested in an eradication program there if the Kangaroo Island uh, program fits well. The good thing about places like Kangaroo Island and Tasmania is they are isolated. The trucks that come in, usually sheep are already shorn uh, so we're less likely to be carrying flies in. 
mainland management and eradication program, we could do a moving front similar to screw worm fly. Although there are some groups like McBrides who are looking up in some of their pastoral areas where they just cannot get all their animals in uh, when they get a, a, a spike in numbers, which uh, can be any time of year, depending on rainfall. And it seems to be a bit of a problem up there at the moment. Uh, so I'll stop uh, if anyone's got any questions. Yeah, Peter, we have uh, a question about um, what monitoring measurement techniques do you use to determine if the release of the sterile flies has been effective? Um, we'll be using I get two, I guess the two main um, tools we'll be using for measurement. One will, will be some trapping programs, um, but also monitoring uh, strike. We, we can, we can uh, if we are trapping, we can um, tell the difference between wild flies and sterile flies. We have some tricks for that. Just like to uh, thank everyone who joined the uh, webinar today. And I'd just like to thank um, both Peter and Narell for uh, sharing their insights and expertise. If anyone's got any additional questions, um, you can contact us directly. And uh, so just like to thank uh, everybody for your time and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you. If you're interested in insecticide resistance for sheep blowfly, you can watch our recording on the Sheep Connect SA YouTube channel.